Hey yo, what's up and welcome. I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome to a brand new career mode series here with the Chicago Fire in MLS. Now my decision making process for choosing the team for this series was one that was very long and drawn out. I really went around and around and around trying to figure out not just what team I was going to use, but even where I was going to do this series. Did I want to stay in MLS? Did I want to go to Europe? I asked you guys in the last episode of the LAFC series, wh where should we go? Which way should we go with this thing? And the voting was kind of split. I think maybe just slightly leaning towards staying in MLS, which makes sense. It's kind of my bread and butter. It's the league that I love to use anyway. And it just makes sense for me to stay in MLS. I did look at other teams outside of this league in Europe and even in Mexico, but nothing really stood out to me. Nothing really caught my eye as a team that I really wanted to use and I thought would make for a fun and interesting series for me. So that is why I am staying with MLS. So the Chicago Fire, they are a team with a bit of a decent history. They actually have won quite a few trophies. They have one MLS Cup to their name, four US Open Cups and a Supporter Shield. Although the last trophy they won was in 2006. So over the last decade plus, hasn't been the greatest of times for the team from the Windy City. And honestly, it's just been, I think, just a bit of mismanagement in real life. It's just, it just hasn't, there always seems to be one step forward and two steps back. For instance, two years ago, this Chicago team finished third in the Eastern Conference ahead of Atlanta United, technically tied on points with Atlanta United, but still they finished in third place in the Eastern Conference. And then the next season they finished next to last, while of course Atlanta went on to win MLS Cup. So it's just always one step forward and two steps back, and it's been like that for 13 plus years. So I think it's time to come in and just change the culture and just not quite blow this thing up, but really, really get into the roots of the problem here and kind of almost start from scratch. But before we get in and dig into this team and start making moves and changes and things like that, let's actually pump the brakes real quick. This is episode zero of this series, which if you're new around here, that means we're not actually playing any games. What we're doing is introducing the series. So let's actually do that first. Now the rules are gonna be pretty similar to what we had towards the end of the LAFC series. I thought that was a pretty decent rule set to go with, and I don't think I'm going to tweak it too much from there. So to start off with, we are going to be bringing back the MLS draft. I really like the way that system worked and introducing Youth Academy players to our senior squad. And the way the MLS draft is going to work is I will scout players, bring them into our youth academy, and then at the end of the season, after MLS Cup, we will hold the MLS draft, and we'll be able to select three players in three rounds uh, to add to our senior team. And I'll get more into how the rounds and everything are going to work once we get to the MLS draft, because again, that's at the end of the season, that's over, that's a year away. So I don't want to get into it too much right now, but the MLS draft will be coming back. The next rule that we have, of course, is the designated player rule. And now we can actually get in and, you know, take a look at the team a little bit here. We have three designated players already in this team. At least according to our rules, our designated players are going to be Nicolas Gaitan, Bastian Schweinsteiger, and Emmanuel Nikolic. In real life, Gaitan actually is not a designated player for this team. The third designated player is Alexander Katai. But according to our rules... Any player making over $10,000 per week in wages is going to be a designated player. That leaves us with Nikolic, Schweini, and Gaitan. Can't really do it any other way. Those are going to be have to, those are going to have to be our three DPs heading into the season. So those are the only two rules that are set in stone that we're not going to be altering anytime soon. The designated player rule we'll take a look at at the end of each season, maybe adjust it a little bit to make things a little bit more difficult if we need to. I did that with the LAFC series as well. But those are the rules that are set in stone. There are, however, some other circumstances that we are going to be keeping in mind for this series. The first of which is our transfer policy. In real life, MLS teams do not make a million transfers per transfer window. We're not going to go out and buy an entire new team in our first transfer window, which if you remember, this being an MLS series, 
We don't even get a transfer window until uh, July anyway. So we have five months to wait until we can actually make a move. But once that first transfer window opens up, I'm not going to buy an entire new midfield or an entire new defense. That's not how MLS teams operate. We do have to build it kind of slow, keeping kind of limiting our transfers to two or three per window, I would say. But even more realistic, I'm going to try to keep it to maybe one or two per window. And the other thing that I'm going to be trying to keep as realistic as possible is the transfers going out of our club. Who's offering for our players, as well as you know what our players' loyalty would be to us. How long have they been here? Did we draft them as a youngster? Did they come through our youth academy, basically? And then just take it on a case-by-case -case basis. If it's a big team from Europe offering for one of our players, an up-and-coming player with decent potential, they're probably going to want to move on a la Alfonso Davies, something like that. So again, I'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll see what happens and we'll see how difficult it's going to be to keep some of, some of our good young players in our team. And that is going to do it for the rules for this series. I try to keep them as simple as possible while also trying to, you know, keep the series as realistic as possible. But if you have any questions on the rules, Leave your question in the comments. I'll answer them or someone that's been around and, and knows the series and knows the rules, they'll answer them as well. But now we can get in and take a look at the squad. And this is the default team for the Chicago Fire. This is how it is set up. I haven't touched anything. No, None of the starters have been changed or moved or substituted or anything. This is how the team is set up. And right off the bat, have some issues. Well, let's just, let's just start off at the top here. We have Nemanja Nikolic. He is 75 rated. He is a former Golden Boot winner from three years ago. When they finished third place, he won the Golden Boot. He was actually fairly decent. But uh, not so good recently. He is uh, 30 years old as well. And honestly, we'll see how he plays in the first five months. This is one of the pros to having five months with a team before you can actually make a move i would be up for replacing him with somebody different in the lafc series i stuck with christian ramirez for the entirety of that one i kind of want to make a move for a new striker and nikolic really hasn't been getting it done for chicago the last season plus so i would be up for replacing him but again we'll see how he does in behind him we have nicholas gaitan and honestly in real life I kind of like this move for Chicago. They are really lacking playmakers after they got rid of David Akam. But for this series, I don't I didn't want Gaetan. I was actually kind of disappointed in that. But we'll see again. We'll see how he plays. Um, as a designated player, he better come through in a big way. I have other ideas for a center attacking mid in the team. Obviously, we have the young Mihailovic. He's gotten a call up to the US national team recently. Really looking like he might have a breakout season for Chicago this year. But Gaitan is the man in there right now. If he plays well, we may keep him as a designated player. He's here on a four-year contract. He is 29 years old, but we'll see how he plays as well. On the left-hand side, it is Alexander Katai. And in real life, he is a designated player for Chicago. In this series, he is not. And I'm really... Like, he's another one. All three of these first players, these first three, I'm on the fence about. I'm not sure if I want to keep them in this team or not. Katai, as a winger, doesn't look all that impressive. 64 sprint speed. I do not know if that's going to be getting it done for us. But he does have four-star skills and a four-star weak foot. He is only 26 years old. Maybe he could play well. I'm optimistic about this one, but I am still on the fence. On the right-hand side, we have Frankowski and... This one I'm excited about. This one, I saw him play against Seattle in real life this season. And he was the most impressive player on the field for me for the Chicago Fire. He is very, very quick. 92 sprint speed, which I didn't know until I started and got into this team. Um, he does only have 3-star, three 3-star. Three but I think we can work with that. He does have decent potential as well. He's only 22 years old. I think this guy is someone we could build this team around. I definitely want to keep him for at least a couple of seasons in this series. Again, we'll have to see what offers come in for him once his overall starts to climb a little bit. But I'm excited about this guy. In the middle, we have our captain, Dax McCarty. A very solid veteran MLS player. At 30 years old, not the fleetest of foot, I wouldn't say. He went 49 sprint speed. 
is one of the reasons I can't play. I cannot play Schweiny in the midfield next to him. Schweiny only has like 37 sprint speed. I can't play him next to McCarty with 49. That would not work. We'd get absolutely decimated in the middle of the pitch. So McCarty's going to be in there. Schweiny's probably going to be in the defense at least to start out with. Um, but McCarty, I I'm pretty happy with him. I, I don't see us moving on from him at least for the first season or two. Um, I, he's our captain right now. I, I really, really like him as an MLS player. He's just one of those solid guys that it's just good to have in your team. And next to him, we have a young up and coming midfielder by the name of Mo Adams. Honestly, I don't know too much about him. Um, he is English. He is only what? 20, 21. Um, kind of, kind of smaller as well. Next to Dax five, six. I don't have a, a big mid midfielder in there, which I tend to like to have, but Right now, he's the best we have, and he actually does have decent potential as well, so I'm willing to give him a shot, absolutely. We'll see how he does for the first five months in there next to McCarty. So that attack in midfield is actually pretty decent. I think we're going to be able to score some goals early on in the season, and I at least I really hope we can because I'm not sure how this defense is going. I don't even know how it's going to look. I, I don't think Corrales is going to be in the starting 11 to start out with, but... I don't know, let's just let's go through it player by player from what the default squad looks like and then then we'll change things later on so first up is jorge corrales and uh he has the worst potential on the team i guess i honestly there aren't any good left backs or right backs on this team there there just aren't i'm gonna be blunt they're not good and i don't know what again i thought i said i don't know what we're gonna do with this defense but corrales if he even starts the season on the field i don't i we're in trouble I, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen with him. For now, in the center back position is Schweinsteiger. And again, I, we, I've been over that situation with him and McCarty. Schweine kind of has to stay back here, at least to begin with. So he'll be in there in a center back spot. Then we have Marcelo. Uh, he's 28 years old, 5 foot 10. Not, not the tallest guy. Schweine's only 6 foot, so he's not really the biggest guy either. And then we also have Kapelhoff, who's 5'11", and is a center back as well. He, he, he can play right back, but I, I, I would almost prefer him as a center back. So, I just don't, I don't, I don't know. That, that's what we have. I don't know what it's going to look like when we come to the first game of the year. And then in goal is David Ousted. I respect him. He's been around MLS for quite a while, but he is 33, and he is on the decline now. And, uh... I would say that goalkeeper is one of the top priorities, if not the number one priority, uh, going into the transfer window in the summer. Actually, it kind of depends on whether or not we're contending. If I think that we actually could make a playoff run this season and goalkeeper is an area of need, then maybe we address that in the transfer window. If not, if we're kind of on the bubble, maybe we make the playoffs, maybe we're not going to, then maybe we hold off and look for one in the MLS draft. It just, just kind of depends on where we're at. As for the rest of the squad, we have CJ Sapong as our backup striker right now. And honestly, I like the way he plays. I think he could be a valuable asset to this team as a backup striker. Just kind of depends on whether or not he's happy with that role. Up next is Hasler, who is, I believe is a player that Chicago just got rid of in real life. So, awkward. But uh, actually, I think he might be able to play a role for us on this team, at least here in season number one. I, I don't think I'm going to get rid of him. Uh, Christian Martinez. Oh, Christian Martinez. Uh, I had him when I did the Columbus series. I had him in Columbus. And if you saw the LAFC series, I called our striker in that series, Christian Ramirez. I called him Christian Martinez more than a few times. Now you know why. It's because of Christian Martinez here. And now he's back. So if I call Christian Martinez, Christian Ramirez this year or in the series at all, you'll know why. It's just coming back to haunt me again with those. I don't know how I get those two mixed up. They could not be any more polar opposite than what they are, but somehow the names just get mixed up with me. Uh, we have Mihailovic here, who's a really promising young player. I think I mentioned that earlier, uh, but with Gaitan now in the team, I don't know where Mihailovic fits in, but I want to try to nurture what little young talent we have in this team. There's only a a couple players, Mihailovic, Adams, and Frankowski, maybe. Those might be the only young players that actually might prove to be something here. We need to get Mihailovic on the field as much as possible this season. And honestly, right now, I don't know where that's going to be. Uh, Lillard is another okay young player. Uh, might be the only center back that I actually like on the team right now as far as his physicality goes. He has 75 strength, which isn't bad, but he's six foot four. 
We're desperately missing height in the defense. He might end up with a, a starting role. I, I honestly, I don't know how the team's going to play out right now, but he might have some potential to him. I might get him on the field a little bit. Campos, nah, not probably not. Uh, Sanchez, Lord help us. No, please no. Uh, then the rest of the team, Br Bronico, is that how you say his name? Don't know because he doesn't play that much, but maybe has a little bit of potential to him. Raheem Edwards has some speed, which is kind of important because we're desperately lacking that in this squad. So he might see the field quite a bit this season. Fabian Herbers, not so much. Uh, just nothing really stands out about him. Nothing special about him, unfortunately. And then we have Cleveland, a young goalkeeper who probably will end up being the backup. Um, I, Sanchez, there's no, no, I've, I've seen him play too often in real life. There's, I just don't trust. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. I'm probably going to go with Cleveland as our backup goalkeeper. And the rest of these guys down here, younger players. Reynolds has a little bit of potential to him, but he's only 55 rated. It's going to be a season or two probably before he'd be ready to play. I don't know where these guys really fit into the team. So that is the whole squad as it stands right now. That's the team that's going to start this season here in Chicago I've kicked around the idea of a three at the back formation of Schweini Marcelo and Kapelhoff that could work although I haven't used the three at the back in years and it didn't go all that well the last time I did I think that was with Chapacoense in League of the Americas if you were around for that so yeah it wasn't the greatest of experiments with that squad either I don't know. I don't know how that defense is going to work for the first couple months of the season. I don't know how we're going to fit Mihailovic into the team. There's a lot of questions, and I don't have many answers for you right now, but we'll figure it out. We have the preseason tournament to, to test some things, see how players get along in certain positions. I might move some things around. It, it's going to be an interesting start to the year for this Chicago team. So with that, we're going to go ahead and end episode zero right here. Like I said, this first half of the season is going to be very tricky and yet also very interesting. Some of these players that I'm on the fence about, maybe they perform better than what I'm expecting and they play themselves into the team and they stick around for a little bit. Then again, maybe they play themselves right out of the team and they're gone in the first transfer window. I honestly have no idea how this team is going to perform in the first part of the season and on top of that we're in a very competitive eastern conference to start out with atlanta is very very good new york red bulls is a very solid team nycfc is pretty good and somehow dc united usually is one of the top two or three teams in there as well it's not going to be an easy road just to make the playoffs this season is a pretty lofty expectation but that is the goal i'm setting for us make the playoffs i'm thinking probably Somewhere between the 4th and 6th seed is most likely where we're going to end up if we if everything comes together right, as I'm hoping it does. But it's not going to be easy just to get into the playoffs this year, I don't think. So we'll see how this all goes. And fingers crossed, we're, we're, we're there at the end of the season. But that's it for this one. If you did enjoy it, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you when we come back for episode 1 when our journey begins here with Chicago. See ya.